Hello everyone, Sotlin here and welcome back to another Bedrock Edition tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to build a very simple and small world eater for digging large holes and craters in your Minecraft worlds. This thing is ideal for digging out slime chunks or in general just going straight down extremely quickly and with very little hassle. So if you have a large scale mining operation that you just really do not feel like mining out by hand, then this machine is the thing for you. It can remove hundreds of thousands of blocks in a matter of minutes and it doesn't require any preparation at all you can just set it up in the sky let it run and it'll just go straight to bedrock in a matter of minutes it also goes straight through stone or deep slate it doesn't really matter what the terrain is it'll just dig you a hole super quickly so this is the main TNT bomber that I'll be showing you how to build in today's video. It's not technically a world eater. I like to call it a crater creator because it is very good at building craters. <laughs> so this system right here is optimized to blow up a 16 by 16 area or one chunk. So this is perfect for like a single slime chunk or other relatively small scale mining operations. If you need a much larger area bombed out, then I'll also be showing you this design over here, which is a 20 25 by 25 crater. It looks a lot more complicated, but it's actually not too bad. These systems are pretty TNT efficient. All the dispensers are spaced out in the best pattern that I can find to blow up the most blocks for the least amount of TNT. You can also determine how much TNT you put in the machine to tell it how far to dig down. So if you want to dig all the way to bedrock, then you put like 200 TNT in each dispenser. If you want to go to like Y0, then you put about 140. There's two different ways of using these machines. You can either set them up with a trap chest and that will move down the bomber one block at a time. And this is ideal for areas that you have not scouted. That way you can keep an eye out for water or lava. Water and lava cannot be blown up, so you need to remove those ones by hand. If you just don't care and you want to watch the world burn, you can put a target block on there, shoot that with an arrow, and then this is just going to blow up absolutely everything in its path, and it's just going to keep on going until you tell it to stop. As you can see, it is pretty crazy, and it just doesn't really care what's in front of it. It's going to blow it up super quickly. So all the TNT is exploding mid-air, which is going to give it the best chance of breaking as many blocks as possible, which helps with our TNT efficiency. As you can see, it is a lot of TNT, but this does save you many hours or even days of mining, because every chunk in Minecraft now has 128 blocks of just solid stone and deep slate in it. So it takes a very long time to mine out by hand. And as you can see, it's already gone through to the deep slate layer and deep slate is actually not that blast resistant. So it's easier to blow up with TNT than stone is, which is kind of surprising. If you ever want to stop the machine while it's on automatic mode, you can just simply pick up that arrow or break the target block and then the machine will stop. So as you can see, it blows up basically a perfect 16 by 16 area. There are a couple of blocks left over on the edges, but these are pretty easy to come through and clean up with a pickaxe. That won't really take too much time. You can just kind of sit here and mine straight down for the most part. And this is pretty much the best I could get it with only using five TNT. You could of course use a lot more TNT and then you wouldn't have to clean up any edges or it'd blow up slightly more than a chunk. However, I found that this is a pretty good compromise on TNT efficiency. I'm trying to use the least amount of TNT here and get the most bang for our buck. This system is also TNT efficient in a different way. We're dropping all the TNT from 76 blocks above the surface, meaning that every TNT can blow up about 40 one bits of stone or around 50 55 ish bits of deep slate if we dropped it from any lower we would get 35 or just 10 pieces of stone if we dropped it from any higher then we would get 29 or eight pieces of stone broken per tnt so dropping it from 76 blocks up really is the best way to get a massive explosion and break the most blocks possible I also did a bunch of testing to try and find out the best TNT grid layout, and I think that this grid right here is a very good one. There might be better grid layouts, but this one works extremely well. Basically, all of our TNT dispensers are three blocks diagonal from one another and this kind of checkerboard pattern. And this works extremely well. You don't have any blocks in between the dispensers, like stone, that you need to go through and remove later or that your flying machine might run into. 
And let's hop into the tutorial, shall we? For your convenience, there is a materials listed down in the description of the video. That way you know absolutely everything you need to build with. So for this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to build the 16 by 16 crater creator that bombs out an entire chunk. Now, you can do this a chunk aligned or not, it doesn't matter, but most likely you'll be using this for like a slime farm or something, so I'm just going to be showing you how to build it chunk aligned. Choose an area to bomb out and make sure there's no lakes or ponds or anything like that in it, and if there are, then you'll need to drain those and make sure there's no water or lava. It's not really relevant for today's tutorial, but if you need to know how to find chunk borders, then check out the tutorial in the upper right and that'll show you how to chunk align. I would also recommend removing any trees in the area because those are a very simple thing to mine out and then you're not going to be wasting TNT blowing up a single tree. We're going to pillar up 80 blocks from the highest spot in the area that we're mining out. So this is the highest spot right here. Grab yourself a stack and 16 of blocks. That'll equal 80. And we're just going to pillar up until we run out of these blocks. Now that you've darn pulled up into the sky, we need to go down by three blocks. So we're just going to place in a block right there and then jump down. And then you should have three blocks above you, basically. This is going to be the layer of all your dispensers. We're going down a couple blocks, that way it's easier to place anything. So if you are chunk aligning your build, this would be the center 2x2 two two of your chunk. It doesn't really matter which one of these is your center, but I found that the southeast being the center of the flying machine is ideal. Now go ahead and build up a pillar of blocks that is four blocks tall, and we're going to place a slime block on the back of it like so. Go ahead and remove this pillar of blocks, and then place an observer facing straight upwards, with a dispenser facing downwards below that. We're going to go ahead and pillar up by another three blocks right here, remove those two blocks, and place in a piston facing downwards as well. We need a slime block above that, two slime blocks to the right, and then two slime blocks to the left. Each side of this wing needs an observer facing upwards and then a regular piston below it, just like so. Now we're going to place in a temporary block and then a slime block below that and then two additional slime blocks right here lined up with the center of your flying machine like so. And of course do that on the other side as well. So just three slime blocks in these locations right here. To finish off the bombing array, we need to place in three slime blocks on the front of this wing, observer facing upwards and dispenser facing downwards. Go to the back of this wing, place in two slime blocks, observer facing upwards and dispenser facing down. And then we need to do the exact same thing on the opposite side as well. Three slime blocks on the front, observer up, dispenser down, two slime blocks on the back, observer up and dispenser down. And now we just need to install the engine, so go ahead and place a pillar of three blocks right here. We need to place in a sticky piston on top of that, a slime block below it, and then a regular piston facing downwards right there. Place in a temporary block with an observer facing outwards like so, and then a slime block right here and right here as well. We need a piston facing downwards on the side of that slime block, one more slime block right here, and then your trap chest goes right here. And the last thing that you need to do is place in one observer facing to the side right here to activate that middle piston. Now we need to actually fill up all these dispensers with some TNT, and to do that requires just a tiny bit of math. So basically, you need to figure out how far down you want to mine this crater. So if you're wanting to mine all the way down to bedrock, that is a Y level negative 59. So that is going to be 59 pieces of TNT right there, plus whatever the Y level of the highest part of your area is. So we're currently standing at Y64. So 64 plus 59 equals 123. So you need to put 123 TNT into each one of your five dispensers and in order for this machine to mine you all the way down to bedrock level. If you just want to mine down to Y level 0, then all you need is 64 TNT for this particular zone. If you're at a higher elevation, like on top of a mountain, then obviously you're going to need more TNT to mine through that. It takes one TNT per Y level, basically. And of course, to figure out how much TNT you need in total, you just figure out how much you need for a single dispenser and then times that by your entire array. So 123 times 5 is 615 TNT. That is not that much TNT to mine this all the way down to bedrock level. 
So once you've put the proper amount of TNT into each dispenser, go ahead and remove all of your scaffolding blocks and extra things that are in the way. And now we can actually test this out properly. So open the trap chest and then it'll get pushed down and you should be good to go. As you can see, that TNT is going to blow up the very top layer of your dirt and whatnot. And then you can just keep on opening this trap chest. So basically just spam right click or spam open inventory and you are good to go. As you can see, this is going to be blowing up a lot of things. Now, as you can see, we did get a little bit of water down here. So all we need to do is go ahead and remove that source and then we can continue bombing. If the machine ever gets stuck from a block sticking to one of the arms, all you need to do is break that block and then simply place a button or something on top of that observer that'll push down that arm. Place a button on that observer that'll push down the entire flying machine and then you are good to go to start moving down the whole thing again. Of course, if you get any lava, you need to remove the lava sources as well. If you're interested in how to build the larger crater creator, the 25 by 25 version that uses 13 dispensers, then here is a whole bunch of different angles and screenshots and footage for you to look at. It really isn't too bad though, and you should be able to recreate it using these screenshots if you've been watching the tutorial thus far. If you're prolific with slime stone, then you can probably even expand this design to make it much larger and bomb out even larger areas. If you enjoyed today's Bedrock Edition tutorial, then drop a like as it significantly helps out the video and the channel a ton, and thank you so much for doing so. If you're new here, then maybe consider subscribing to help us reach 500,000 subscribers, and otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys down in the comment section, and in the next one, and then there was silence.